back here for yet another Tottenham update. Click our link in the description to go and see our new website, wattv.co.uk, where you get your latest Tottenham articles, daily articles as well as merch as well. Brand new merch has gone up there, that which is absolutely flying off the shelves, especially our big Ange t-shirts. So do go and check them out if you're looking to get some Christmas presents. But let's get in to the Tottenham update and let's start off talking about a potential incoming by the name of Calvin Phillips as Gazetta Italia say that Tottenham are among some of the teams looking at Calvin Phillips ahead of a January trance window with the player keen to leave Manchester City. Um, I mean, it's no surprise that he's keen to leave City with the game time that he's getting. But uh, would you like to see him come through the door? Uh, is his game time going to improve at Tottenham than it is at City? Maybe like literally tiny bit marginally, but no, not really uh, at all. I don't see a guaranteed spot for him at Spurs. Uh, ben Tenkel is coming back. We've got Hoybier. I don't see this deal happening unless Hoybier leaves as well. Um, if we let go of Hoybier, I'm assuming it's going to be between 25 and 30 million. How much is Calvin Phillips going to cost? So um, I don't really see this happening in January. I don't. I think it's just uh, paper talk, to be honest. I, I don't. Maybe in the summer, maybe there's a conversation to have to be had but I don't think in January it's realistic not even in the summer to be honest I do see it like I don't see it being January or the summer um, whether it's realistic or not I just see him going to a club where he's going to be the main guy in midfield where he's going to play week in week out um, he's been at Man City and just not played whatsoever uh, since going there last summer and yeah, even if Hoybier was to leave, we do need to bring in mid a midfielder. But I just don't see Calvin Phillips wanting to come here to play second fiddle to Basuma, pretty mm -hmm. much. That makes sense to me. Um, so whether it be in the summer or in January, I, I really don't see this happening either way. But on the other side, I would really like to see it happen because I think he's a quality player. I think he would add to our midfield and I think he would represent... Um, first of all, homegrown talent, which we desperately need. And second of all, a really good option um, if Hoybier was to leave or when mm. Hoybier leaves, because I do think he is going to leave. And I think we could do a lot worse than bringing in Calvin Phillips. You're right about that. Yeah. Um, in terms of Eric Dyer, the football insider is saying that Dyer is keen to leave Spurs um, in the upcoming January trance window. The England international joined Tottenham back in 2014 and has made a total of 360 appearances for the club across all competitions. He has fallen out of favour since the arrival of Ange Postacoglu over the summer though it is yet to make an appearance under the Australian mm -hmm. um, it's weird one this because I actually did see a report earlier in the day from Football Insiders saying that Eric Dyer has no interest in leaving in January and he wants to go on a free <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> we'll have to wait and see I, I guess uh, what, is, what is the truth if I was him I would look to leave as soon as possible just to try and get his career back on track but obviously if you wait another six months he's going to have complete freedom of where he goes whereas in now he has to be kind of beholden to who's bidding and uh, who Tottenham accept bids from and all that kind of stuff so Obviously, from a selfish point of view, he might wait another six months. But if he really wants to get his career back on track and if we can open up a space in the centre-back area in January, that's best for everyone, I think. But I can see Dyer waiting out. Because if he didn't do it in, in the summer, what, why why would he uh, well, be more desperate now? The reasoning being is because maybe he thought... Um, the more anti in training or something, he could force his way into the team or something like that. But that just hasn't seem to materialise whatsoever. Obviously, we haven't had any injuries. Mickey van der Ven and Romero playing at the top of their game at the moment. Um, but maybe he thought and he backed himself to maybe change Ange's mind. But that doesn't seem to be happening. Yeah, maybe that's the case. Um, I think he would have been told that it's unlikely he was going to be um, playing games this season, to be honest. I think he would have been told that in the summer. But maybe, uh, as all football players do, they have this ego about them that they you know, they can prove themselves and they're the best and all that kind of stuff. You don't get to that level without that mentality. So maybe that's the case and maybe that would have changed. But after we'll see in January, mm -hmm. I don't expect him. Um, I don't know. Either way, I just hope we get a new centre-back, either whether he stays or not. Yeah. Um, let's finish off on a few quotes. First one regarding Rodrigo Bentancor, and he says he's talking about his return, his emotional return to the team uh, last weekend. And he says it was an incredible moment. I wasn't expecting so much love and support from the fans and my teammates. It was incredible to be able to get up and move and be close to the fans and hear the song again. It gave me goosebumps, to be honest. And I almost cried, actually, because it was such an emotional moment. I'd like to thank the fans for their support throughout these long months. I've always felt their affection and now thankfully we can be around each other again. And, and it's mm. something that we felt in the stands, didn't we, when, when that moment was happening? Like you could see the emotion on his face, couldn't you? You could see how much it meant to him and and to the his teammates as well and the, and the rest of the squad, him being back, how much it meant to everyone. And you could see 
how hard he had worked to get back to to full fitness and um, to even shave off a few weeks potentially of his recovery. He must be why he said. I don't know if you. Um, there's a video Spurs released on Spurs Play called The Return of uh, mm, Ben Tickles. I haven't watched it yet. So they've kind of released a mini documentary on it. And uh, he said that for the past like eight months or so, he's not only been like training like when the, when there is training on, but he's been outside of work as well, putting double sessions in. He said, of that. he said he's had hundreds and hundreds of training sessions just putting in the hard yards to try and get... No, He said not only to get back to on the pitch, but I want to get back as soon as possible to the level I was playing at before the injury. That's his goal. It's not just about getting back on the pitch. So um, you saw how... Um, it was. It could look like there was a weight lifted off his shoulders. You saw even before he came on, he was clapping the fans who were singing his name, and he said um, in the in the video like how amazing it was to hear the fans sing his name again, and if it just felt so special, and it was a great moment. And uh, I think we have to thank the fans for creating such a special moment for him as well, and and the rest of the team um, because uh, they really made it feel like a bit of an occasion. Yeah, and I think these quotes were actually from uh, that video as well. So, yes, I'm saying, yeah. Uh, great stuff there from Rodrigo Bentancourt. But let's finish off talking about Hyung Min Son. First of all, we're going to get the quote from, from Sonny on Ange Postacoglu, and he says, it's been a fantastic journey for him and for us so far. The way he speaks during his pre-match talks um, are incredible. It makes me feel like my heart is bouncing and I feel like I want to go out there and give my all for him and this club. Um, this So this has made the huge difference. Mm. But which is kind of interesting because, you know, maybe he's, I don't know, I'm not saying he's like digging anyone previously, but Mourinho and Conte are known for like being these like great motivators and giving good big talks for the game and, but it seems as though Andrew Postcoglu's done things in a different way. I don't know what he says things to the team before the game, but every Madison says the same thing. Whatever, when Andrew says something, it makes you want to like run for a brick wall for him. And you know, clearly, he's made a massive impression on on the team. And Son is obviously saying that again. And Son has um, done really well under Andrew. I think his pressing game has gone up a lot um, since <clears> moving to central striker. And clearly, they found a solution to him when it wasn't working so well on the left-hand side. They moved in central and look how well he's done. So I think uh, Ange and Sonny are clearly developing a really good relationship. And obviously, Ange made him captain as well. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, Sonny's just that kind of guy. Like, he'll run through brick walls for any manager, wouldn't mm. he? Um, I think every manager seems to have got a tune out of him. I mean, under Conte, he got the golden boot. Under Jose Mourinho, he had that relationship with Harry Kane, which was just unbelievable. Um, under Pochettino, we all know what happened there. Um, maybe not under Nuno, but uh, uh, I think even under Nuno, what he scored against City, the yeah, winner. that's true, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, like every manager gets Sonny running through brick walls for him, doesn't mm. he? That's just the mentality of the guy and how good he is, and and it just shows what a professional he is. He's the perfect like player for a manager, isn't he? If you were to like hand pick a player with that mentality and the quality of Son does, he's like you just you could only wish for a player if every player was like Son, yeah. kind of thing. We all dream of a team of Hyungmin Sons. Exactly. <laughs> um, and there's a quote from Saliba on Hyungmin Son as well. And he says he's a really good player, fast, technical. And when he has one on one against the keeper, he's so clean. So we have to tell him to stop scoring. Really good striker, winger, everything. And I hope he won't score a lot this season. Well, <laughs> your hopes are already going out the window. He must be having sleepless nights from the North London derby, Saliba. Because you would have thought like... If that was a kind of centre back partner to Gabriel Sleber that some would probably struggle against when he's playing up front, physical players who were who were also strong and fast, you'd have thought some would have struggled against the, that back line. But obviously that that finish for the first goal was brilliant and he got a made a, he pounced on a mistake for the second goal. And um it's nice to see Saliba acknowledging um how good Sonny is. And look, Sonny obviously before this season has a, had a reputation of being just, you know, one of the best like wingers or players in the Premier League. But I think at the end of this season we're gonna be talking talking about Son as one of the best strikers in the Premier League right I'm now. I'm already talking about it, to be honest. I really am. I think Hyung min Son, with that clinical edge, first of all, he's the most clinical striker in the Premier League, hands down, um, first and foremost. And I think he is improving that link-up play, uh, like we mentioned in one of the videos that we did earlier today. So I do think already... He's up there with the best strikers in the Premier League. I really do. Uh, I mean, I mean, Spurs fans will always be talking about it. I mean, like the wider mm. collective. Will, yeah. I think they'll finally get, to, they'll see like, because we don't like, it's hard to put Son in the bracket of a top 
striker when a lot of his career he's been playing out wide and stuff. But I think now people are going to set people are going to be start calling him one of the best strikers in the league. Yeah, absolutely. But that is your Tottenham update for today. A nice, quick, and short one for you today. Uh, do go and check out our website wattv.co.uk. We will be bringing out uh, content surrounding the comments on each and every article. We'll pick out the best ones and uh, react to them. So do leave your best comments, funny, stupid, clever, whatever you want it to be, and we'll react to them. But thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, How come on, you Spurs. Spurs.